Hey guys and welcome back. Uh, this is Chris and uh, in this tutorial we are going to cover how to uh, keep our Tetramino piece within our playing grid and uh, in order to do that uh, we're gonna have to define what our grid actually is. So we need to specify a grid width and a grid height and uh, the place we're gonna actually do that in is in the uh, game class. Alright, so in our game class uh, let's go ahead and create two public variables for the grid height and the grid width. And these are going to just be integers. Okay. And uh, any Tetris game, basically the, uh, the playing field is always going to be uh, 10 in the width and 20 in the height. Um, so we're going to um, basically just copy that. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create a method in uh, this class. And uh, we're going to make this a public method because we want to uh, we want to access this method from our Tetramino class. So this public method is going to return a bool. And uh, we're going to call this check is inside grid. And uh, what we're going to pass here is a vector 2, and let's call this position, okay? Because we're going to pass the, uh, the Tetramino's position that is checking um, to see if it's inside the grid. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to return the uh, x position if it's greater than or equal to zero. Uh, uh, X position is less than the grid width. And Y position is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. So this is going to return true as long as all of these are true, okay? So the x position has to be greater than or equal to zero. It also has to be less than the grid width. And the y position has to be greater than or equal to zero. And as long as these are true, this method is going to return true. Otherwise, we're gonna get a false and we know that we're not inside the grid, okay? Okay, so Besides creating the uh, check is inside grid method, uh, we're also going to need one more, and this is still sort of just a helper method. Um, and basically, what this is going to do is it's going to round our x and y positions for us, so that we don't constantly have to call math f dot round or um, on the y or the x positions. So what we'll do here is uh, we're going to make this public so that we can access it from a Tetramino class, and uh, it's going to return a vector two. I'm going to call this round. And we're going to pass in the uh, position. And we return a new vector 2 with a rounded x coordinate and a rounded y coordinate. Just like that. Okay? Now in our um, Tetramino class, we are going to create a method, and uh, it's going to return a bool. And uh, that method we're going to call check is valid position. Okay. And the reason that we're creating a method is because we need to iterate over all the children of the uh, the parent Tetramino because when we're pa when we're checking. Uh, Positions. We want to check the positions of the minos, the individual uh, tiles, instead of the whole tetramino um, piece. So we're going to do that with a for each loop, and going to get the transform in the transform, and the variable that we're creating is called mino for each iteration, and um, 
what we're going to do is for each iteration, we're going to uh, create a reference uh, variable named position. It's going to be a vector two, and we're going to use the uh, find object of type um, to get our game class, and then call our round function, and uh, we're going to pass it the uh, position of the of the mino that we're currently at in the uh, iteration of the for each loop, okay? So that, this position variable here is going to contain a uh, rounded value of the Mino's current uh, position of the iteration. So what we're, uh, we're going to do next is we're going to uh, do an if condition and uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to call the uh, check is in grid uh, method on the uh, game class to check and see if the current position of the iteration in the for each loop is in the grid. Okay, so this is how this is going to look. Uh, we're going to use again find object of type the game, and we're going to call the check is inside grid method. I'm going to pass it the newly rounded position, and we're going to check and see if that equals false. Okay, if it is false, then uh, we return false. Otherwise, let's see here, um, we're going to, uh, so if this is false, return false, otherwise, outside of the for loop, we're going to return true. Of course, you need to add the return keyword. Okay, so we check to see if at the current iteration, okay, if the position of the Mino is inside the grid. Okay, if it's not inside the grid, we return false. And at every iteration, we, we check this. Okay, so once a Mino is not within the grid, we're going to return false, and this return true will never get called. So it's going to exit out of the for each loop and return false for us. If this never is false, then the um, the whole Tetramino piece is within the grid, and we're just going to return true. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to put this method to use. Um, and the way we're going to do that is first uh, show you guys how this is going to work. Is uh, in the right arrow after we uh, increment the position. We're going to check is valid position, okay? Oops. All right. If check is valid position, so again, if it's a valid position, it's going to return true. If it's not, then it'll return false. Okay. So if it's not at a valid position, we don't want to allow this move to happen at all okay so basically we're going to just counteract the move that we made by incrementing by negative one and since this is all happening in the same frame it'll be like the piece never move at all so this is like attempting a move and then we're checking to see if the move that we just attempted is at a valid position. If it's not, we're going to move the piece back by the same amount that we've moved it, or that we've attempted to move it to, okay? And we can do this for all of the other methods, uh, or sorry, for all the other if statements. So if check is valid position, it's not, Transform at position this equals vector three one zero zero. Okay, so basically we're just passing in the opposite values. <laughs> um, if check is valid position. Else, 
transform position plus equals and go to three zero one zero okay all right so now um, we should be confined to our grid so let's go ahead and save this open up unity click play and now we're stuck can't go any further go any further here and we can still go down and that's because it looks like we can still go down because our grid is positioned correctly. So what we need to do is we need to come in here. We actually need to move our grid down one. Okay. And then we also need to adjust our camera. Um, let's go nine. All right. So now it should look proper. Yep. So here's one thing, um, we can still, we can still rotate out of place, so outside of the grid. Um, there's nothing to stop us from rotating outside of the grid because we still have to add that bit of code into our Tetramino class because right now it's going to allow us to rotate no matter what. Um, it's going to rotate by 90 degrees every single time we do it. So we need to put the same kind of check into that rotation. Um, <clears throat> so the way we do that is we use that same um, if check valid position else it's not. This actually needs to go before that because we have to attempt to create, we have to attempt to rotate before we check what the rotation is. Because you know this updates, then we check what the position is. So then, <clears throat> if it's not out of all the position, then uh, we want to move it back. And basically, we do the same thing here. We're going to transform that rotate uh, zero zero negative ninety. So we just get back to where we were. All right, so now the rotation should also be confined to within the grid. So let's save and go to Unity and click play. So now, yeah, see we can't rotate for right on, basically, yeah, see, no rotations outside the grid. See, we're stuck here, we can't rotate. So everything's good. All right, so I'm uh, I'm gonna end this video here, and uh, when we come back, we're gonna yeah we're gonna talk about some more uh, limitations, um, like uh, such as uh, the square doesn't need to rotate at all, so we're going to disable its rotation. Uh, we're gonna be creating some more variables. Uh, the S and Z shapes they're only gonna go 90 and negative 90, so they're not gonna go 90. Um, you know, 180, 270. So all they're going to do is rotate uh, forward and backward. That's it. So ne uh, 90 and negative 90. Um, and then I think uh, let's look here. Uh, yeah, and then everything else. So we're going to add some uh, limitations to our pieces, and um, that's what it's. That's what we're going to get into next. And uh, yep. So that's pretty much it. And uh, I'll see you guys soon.